What the fuck? <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Date and I am your humble narrator and welcome back to another Pokemon Day Top 10 list. Today, we are going to be looking at the top 10 most disappointing Pokemon in the franchise. Now this is a lot of personal preference obviously, um, these are just Pokemon that I had high expectations for and that sort of fell short in the long run. There are a few uh, honorable mentions popping up on the screen, Dunsparce was my number 11 because I love him so much but he's just uh, let down by his speed. He has really good defense and HP but no speed. So let's jump into it before too much time passes. This is the top 10 most disappointing Pokemon. Number 10. Number 10, I have Sunflora. I absolutely love Sunflora. Sunflower seeds are delicious. And uh, this Pokemon has a really great special attack stat. Its defenses do let it down quite a bit. But even more than that, um, it's let down by its speed. 30 base speed is absolutely abysmal for uh, a fully evolved Pokemon. So even with Chlorophyll, which is one of its abilities uh, doubling its speed, it doesn't get fast enough to compete with most of the metagame, so it is stuck in the PU tier, which is uh, even under never used, so uh, I think that's pretty deserved. I'm disappointed by Sunflora. If if it had a, a choice scarf or something like that with its uh, chlorophyll boost, it might be worth using, but as it stands, it is quite a disappointing Pokemon. <laughs> Number nine. Number nine is unown. Uh, unown is this Pokemon's name, which means that you should release it immediately upon catching it. Um, it only has one move, that being hidden power, and uh, the type of that move is based on their IV stats. So it's quite unpredictable, uh, but they only have that one move and it's not even that well powered so most people end up disappointed by unknown it's kind of fun to sit down and catch all 26 since they represent letters of the alphabet but overall i think it's a fairly gimmicky pokemon i found myself quite disappointed by it and i think unowning it is is the right thing to do just let it be free be free unknown Number eight. For number eight, I have Noctowl. Noctowl is a, a pretty good normal flying type, but it is beat to shit by other normal flying types such as Braviary and Star Raptor. Um, it has sort of a utility twist to it, as opposed to the hyper offensive types. Uh, it can learn Hypnosis and things like that, but Hypnosis is fairly inaccurate and uh, it's not really worth putting onto Noctowl. I think the design is pretty cool. I was excited to catch a Hoot Hoot back in uh, Gold and Silver when the time thing first came out. Uh, time, Timed catches, night and day. Um, but for my first Nocturnal Pokemon, I was extremely disappointed by Noctowl, so he makes it to number 8 on the most disappointing list. Number 7. Delibird is quite a piece of poop. Uh, he has Present as his one special move, which can heal your opponent as well as damaging them. Um, on top of that, his stats just let him down quite a bit. With Hustle and the Choice Band, he can actually hit pretty hard, but uh, he doesn't have that many moves that are worth using. Ice Shard is pretty good. Um, he can learn Fly, I think, Drain Punch, some other weird shit, but... Uh, it's not great. This poor little Santa Pokemon was gifted absolutely nothing um, in the way of either stats or moves. And so, although it has a pretty interesting design, it ends up falling by the wayside as the number seven most disappointing Pokemon. Number six. Pelipper is number six. I talked briefly about the, the multitude of water flying types in a previous video, and Swano is named as the number one um, there. But Pelipper really is 
an absolutely disappointing Pokemon in his own way. Um, he does have decent defense stats if you want to use him as a, a defensive wall. It's pretty usable. However, his HP stat lets him down and stacked with a relatively low special attack stat. Pelipper just l is a bit lackluster for anything that you want to do. I usually end up using him as an HM slave for Fly and Surf. For that, I do apologize, um, but he just needs a little more oomph in order to see actual use. Number 5 Going into the top 5, we have Chingling uh, slash Kaimeko. Really a good cleric Pokemon, all things considered. It can learn Light Screen, Reflect, Recover, as well as a variety of status moves. However, its defenses just seem to let it down, as well as its extremely low speed, uh, I find disappointing. It's a pretty interesting idea, a Bell Pokemon, um, and I really would hope for it to have some more Sonic-based attacks, similar to Loudred, Hyper Voice, or something like that. However, it doesn't even have that as far as its moveset is concerned, which I find extremely disappointing. So I'm sorry, Kaimeko, but you are the number five slot. Number four. Number four, Mr. Carnivine. My goodness, why do you exist? Uh, again, there's that extremely low base speed stat. He does have a decent attack stat to back it up, but he's not going to get to attack because of his low HP and defenses. So I used the Carnivine in the generation when it first came out and basically had myself convinced that at some point it was going to evolve. I uh, got it to around level 40 or 50 before I finally looked it up and realized that was not the case at all. So uh, while it's an interesting Pokemon, really cool design, can learn some cool attacks, it doesn't really um, keep pace with the rest of the Pokemon in, in other tiers. So he's relegated to PU and for good reason I think. I'm sorry Carnivine, I love you so much, but you just didn't do it bro. Number three. Top three, we are entering. Uh, the number three spot goes to Watch Hog. Relatively disappointing. Um, those early normal types that you find the rodent Pokemon generally aren't extremely great. You have like Zigzagoon and Raticate. Raticate did make it into my top ten favorite Pokemon, um, which is which is sad <laughs> that Watch Hog didn't make it because uh, he's a decent Pokemon. He has, again, hypnosis and utility moves like that, but he just doesn't have the speed or the power to keep up with his rodent brethren. Um, he makes a decent HM slave, just like all the rodent Pokemon do. However, putting him into combat is probably a mistake unless you're really, really accurate with uh, the hypnosises. You wanna roll those dice? Go ahead, but I ain't gonna. Sorry, Watchhog, I'm disappointed. Number two? Number two slot goes to, uh, well, here's Spritzy. One of the first Generation 6 Pokemon to be released, and there was a lot of speculation over what it could possibly look like when it evolved. Would it be uh, a bird, ostrich thing? That would be extremely cool. Uh, fitting, something that we've seen before but done a little bit differently. Or, what if it was like a really cool uh, witch doctor, shaman kind of thing? That's definitely something we haven't seen before, and this was the one that I was hoping that it would be. Instead, what do we get? <laughs> Aromatis. What the fuck is this thing? It's a, a pile of garbage, basically. It's a, a pink Garbodor, as far as I'm concerned. Really a disappointing Pokemon. It's a good cleric. It, it does have some battle capabilities, some nice uh, defenses, HP, extremely important. But it just, oh my god, what, what happened on the design with this shit? Can somebody talk to Game Freak real quick and just question it? I think somebody needs to ask more questions over Game Freak. What the fuck? <laughs> And number one. Woo, our number one slot goes to Embor. Yes, I was quite disappointed in Generation 5 that Embor turned out to be a 
fire slash fighting type as we had seen in the, the previous two generations with Blaziken and Infernape. People were sick of this, I'll tell you that much. Um, they always have the, the fire fighting types, finally they, they switched it up and we got a fire psychic type in generation 6. But this Pokemon did cause quite a stirring within the Pokemon community as far as I can remember. A lot of people were disappointed that he had the, the fire typing. And he's really not even as good as something like Infernape or Blaziken. So I'm sorry Embor, but you are the crowning jewel for me, the most disappointing Pokemon. So friends, this has been my most disappointing Pokemon list. I do hope that you have enjoyed. Uh, if you disagree or have some Pokemon that you think I missed, the comments are open for your use. I also hope that you will like and or subscribe if you did enjoy this episode. I'm trying to get these Pokemon top 10 lists back out, but it is a lot of work. Um, but definitely worth it. I think you guys enjoy it and I, I enjoy letting my opinion be known. So. I hope to see you in the next one, friends. If you do like, comment, and or subscribe, I'll send you a pack of matches in the mail. Actually, could we send them two? Three? Okay, we'll send you, we'll send you three pack of matches in the mail. That is over 60 matches uh, for your smoking use. <laughs> or whatever, burning down things, ant hills. Is that what kids like? I don't really know. <laughs> I hope to see you in the next one, friends. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. And until the next time. Bye-bye! One, two, three, four Goodbye, goodbye, see you again Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends